Hey everyone, welcome back to another episode of Face Off here at Pureology. If this is your first time here, I want to thank you for joining me and welcome. Whether you're building a new PC or thinking about upgrading right now, it can be a confusing time to know what parts to choose. So today we're going to be looking at three CPUs which I consider to be in the sweet spot for their price to performance ratio. We have the Intel i5-13600K. Next is the AMD Ryzen 7 5800X3D. And lastly is the Ryzen 7 7700X. These are CPUs that will get close to the same gaming performance as their flagship counterparts, but come at a fraction of the cost of those chips like the 13900K or the 7950X. Each of these CPUs are priced in a similar range. They are three to $400. When I'm considering a CPU, I never look at it as an individual piece. I'm always considering it a package with the RAM and the motherboard. So that's what I'm gonna do here. I'm gonna show you the cost of the components I used in testing. And since this is a comparison to show the best value, I'm gonna show the lowest priced parts that will deliver the same performance with less bells and whistles. So it's gonna show the lower and higher end costs of each setup. I think a lot of people are wondering whether or not it's worth upgrading to next gen parts right now with DDR5 RAM speeds getting higher and higher, prices coming down and availability going up for the most part. With this comparison, I'm gonna answer those questions and you'll see they're all pretty close in performance, but one chip stands out above the others in terms of value. So stick around and I'll show you why I think there's a clear winner for this face off. So here's some side by side footage of each of the chips in action. What I did was what I did was run an offline raid in factory and lighthouse using 1080p low settings so that we can see the CPU performance and I also increase the AI scav amount to high. So this really puts a load on the CPU and can hopefully give us some information about how each performs in this game. Okay, so here's some FPS and CPU stats side by side. In terms of FPS average, the 13600K and 5800X3D were about equal, the 7700X coming in a little bit lower. For FPS max, the 7700X actually hit the highest and the 13600K had the lowest value. So a little flip-flopping there. For CPU temps, the 13600K and X3D were at 52, and the 7700X was actually at 46 degrees, quite a bit lower than the other two. The 13600K was pulling 78 watts, while the X3D was at 56, and the 7700X was at 61 watts. So they're all pretty low in power consumption. The Intel being a little bit more power hungry here, 
I did overclock it to 5.6 gigahertz to achieve the performance we got. So that was necessary to get these numbers. So moving on to the GPU stats, I see some interesting things here. I'm not exactly sure how it correlates to the performance, but on the temperature, you can see the 5800X3D running with the 4090. It, it was about 10 degrees hotter, running about 10 degrees hotter on the X3D. So you can see on the you can see on the GPU temps, the 4090 was about 10 degrees hotter when running on the X3D on factory. The usage was about equal, and the power draw was higher on both AMD machines. But the temperature was a lot higher with the X3D, and then the VRAM usage was slightly different as well. Overall performance was very similar though, so I gotta do more analysis, but I'm not sure how all that correlates just yet. On Lighthouse, the 13600K again comes in with the lead at 129, the X3D and 7700X were at 107. For FPS Max on Lighthouse, the 13600K actually had the highest value and the 7700X had the lowest now, so they flip-flopped and the X3D stayed in the middle. In terms of temps, again, around the 50s for 13600 and X3D and the 7700X is running about 5 degrees cooler, 5-6 degrees cool on factory and lighthouse. 75 for the Intel and 54 and 60 for X3D and 7700X respectively. Again, seeing some differences here and I'm not sure how it all correlates together but the temperature difference between the 13600 and the 76 the temperature difference between the 13600 and 7700x was large so 46 to 60 degrees is a 15 degree difference usage was the same pretty much across the board power draw almost the same and then vram usage was varied across the board as well so the 39 the 13600K was using the least VRAM, but it had the highest temp. The X3D was using the most VRAM, was in the middle for temperature, and then the 7700X lowest and lowest temperature, but still pulling around the same amount of power. So it seems they're all pretty much in the same ballpark for performance, but getting there in different ways. So what I did was take the averages from each RAID and then determine the cost per FPS per CPU and also how much FPS per watt they were producing. Now keep in mind, this is not taking into account the cost of other components. It's just a CPU, motherboard, and RAM but this is so that you can kind of compare the value of, of this bundle of components together against each other. So looking at these values, in, for cost per FPS, a lower value is better, and you can see that the X3D comes in way lower, 1600K and 7700X at $3.63 per FPS, while the other two were above $6 each. For FPS per watt, a higher value is better and X3D again is in first place at 2.52 FPS per watt so that means it uses less power to produce more FPS and the 13600K and 7700X were close to 2 FPS per watt. Using all this information I created a scoring system to give a rough CPU value rating and here's how I came up with the formula. I weighted the cost per FPS double of the FPS per watt value. So it's cost per FPS times two minus FPS per watt, and that gives us a P score. A lower score represents a better value in the system. So looking at the scores, we can see that 13600K and 7700X are kind of in the same ballpark at 10.3 and 
1.16, while the 5800X3D is off on its own at 1.11. I've created a leaderboard here for CPU P scores, and I will continue to add to this list so that we can have a growing database of information. Hopefully it will be helpful for you to decide on what CPU to get if you're an Escape from Tarkov player. So again, the purpose of the P-score is really just to determine how much value the CPU, RAM, and motherboard bring in terms of performance in Escape from Tarkov. And I think this does a good job of illustrating the huge gap in value the 5800X3D still represents over the rest of the competitors. So I think it's pretty insane that it can hold that much value while still performing, you know, in the same arena as these new CPUs. And I think this result makes sense because the newer chips aren't going to represent as much value, but they do allow you to have an opportunity to upgrade in the future. The 5800X3D is pretty much the final evolved form of AM4, and that's as far as it's gonna go, but I think it will still be viable for a long time as you can see how much value it provides here for gamers. So I hope this information was helpful for you. If it was, please consider dropping a like and subscribing for more content like this. Thanks for stopping by and have a great day.